and everybody in there from the praise team. Thank you so much. Uh, to my understanding, we had a serious wake-up call um, on this morning. Um, the news said that it was a 5.1. Can I get a little bit of volume on this mic, please? I get some volume on this mic. Uh, they said it was a 5.1 earthquake. 5.1 earthquake at the originated in Sparta, <coughs> North Carolina. And surprisingly to many of us, we were not supposed to feel something like that on this side of the earth. But we did. And since we did, Deacon, I have no choice to believe that God has shook some foundations for someone to be free today. If you woke up, that's good. But what I want to share with you is that what was holding you the foundation of it, come on, flow with me, has been shook and is no longer holding you. I, if you can get this in your spirit and say it with me, I am no longer bound. Say, I am free now. And I want you to top it off and say it with me. God, thank you this morning for waking me up to liberty. And to that which was holding me, it has lost its foundation. Glory be to God. All right. Thank you. We ain't there yet. Let me move. Father, we thank you today. We give you glory and honor because the foundations have been shook. We thank you, God, because you have blessed us woke us up out of our sleep to remind us you are in control. In spite of a pandemic, you are in control. In spite of everything going wrong right now, you are in control. And we seal this praise today with a praise. So I want you to open up your mouth, everybody, and begin to just clap your hands and give the Lord praise. Come on and seal this prayer with a holler. Seal this prayer with a scream. Seal this prayer and release out your mouth a praise to God. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. And I want if you have enough faith and enough boldness, I want you to well, I want you to say it, those of you watching and tuned in to us, I want you to say it right where you are. Uh, he shouldn't have let me wake up this morning. The devil shouldn't have let me wake up this morning. He should have he should have had me and got me when I was laying down. But since God allowed the earthquake to come, shake me up. I got a right and I got a reason to give God praise. Say it with me, devil, I'm about to show you something now. Devil, you done mess with the wrong one. I got a... I've got a right to praise the Lord. I feel a I feel a earthquake dance. I do, I feel a
Come on and bless them. Right where you are, give them glory. his name. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay, listen, um, let me share something with you today, I think. It's, it's going to be a blessing to you. I believe that at the end of the day, there are trust issues in many of us with each other, with our families, co-workers in the church and within ourselves. I've even heard people say, Deacon, that I can't go there because I can't trust myself. I can't connect with her because I can't trust myself. I can't connect with him because I can't trust me. And that's a problem. tell you what you can't do. And if greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, how can an enemy on the outside of you tell you what you can't do, particularly if God lives in you? We have to trust God. One of the Bible, the Bible talks tremendously about trust, even when you don't understand it, you got to trust him. Trust in the Lord, as the Bible says, with all, not a partial of it, but with all your heart. And watch this, and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways. Acknowledge him. And you know what happens after that? When you when you trust him and acknowledge him, he will direct your path. And and we can't go wrong, Deacon, if God is directing our path. So if he's not directing your path, that means you are not acknowledging him and leaning on him, or are you not even trusting him? We got to trust God, and we got to trust and believe that God will do exactly what he said he would do. How many of you believe that this morning? Those of you watching, you got to trust and believe that God will do just what he said. Uh, perfect peace results from trusting in him. You, you can't. If you keep your mind stayed on him, he will keep you what? In perfect peace. Tell somebody that's written. And, and if God said that, God has to back up what he said. Uh, many of us try to be about this life that we got it. We like people to think that we have this much happiness in our life and this much glamour in our life or that we have the best life living, what do we say, living my best life. Or we got the best marriage. Or we got the best job. We, 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 we paint pictures of us because that's 
we want people to believe. But it's just hard to paint a picture when when you really don't have the trust. Right? So what do you mean? Because trust gets you many things. Trust is the apple in the apple pie. Right? Did you hear me? Now, what else can you make from apple? Apple juice? Apple butter? Y'all getting hungry? Apple pie? Apple dumplings? Apple cake? But but if, but if you but apple cobbler, but if, but if you don't have the apple, you can't make any of this. And it's just like trust. If you don't have trust, you can't have a solid relationship with God. Because God will have you doing things that you wouldn't do. He told Abraham, pack up your stuff, get your hat, coat, and the family, and roll. And to a place, watch this, and I'm not even going to tell you. But, but if you can just be obedient, I'm going to give you this place. And, and, so, and so this is what you call trust beyond reason because I don't, I don't even understand why he's telling me to do it. I'm just going to do it. I don't even understand, Pastor Maggie, why God would have me to buy someone's lunch who I know can't stand me. Ooh, y'all, y'all ain't hearing me. That makes absolutely no sense to me. Why would God have me to go give somebody $50 who just lied on me? Because that's what God will do and not you. And if he lives in you, you got to be able to hear him even in circumstances that does not look favorable to God. So let me look at and glance at my own life of why I could not trust the way that I needed to. I can't speak for you, but perhaps what I have learned will help someone today. One of the reasons, guys, why I could not trust is because my past. My past, although I'm a new creature, but I've reflected back on a lot of the games that I used to run on people. Because I ain't been saved all my life. I, I forgot in the church, everybody been saved all their life. But I ain't been saved all my life. And, and, and when I say my past, I'm not talking about what, what people did to me. I'm talking about what I done to them. And, and, and the Bible says that, that you will reap, can I get a church, what you sow. And, and I know that I sowed some things that caused people not to trust me. And so often it's hard to trust because I'm afraid that what I sold is going to come back that day. It's hard to trust. And it's hard for me, Shannon, to trust people. Even right now, can we be honest, after being saved, some of us are still a little skeptic of trusting some people. We're still a little skeptic of trusting because because, again, it is not what they've done. It's what we've done. And, and I know what you're saying. Well, you know, God forgives. And, and God's going to take away all those sins. And he's done that. And I'm grateful for that. But he also said, you will reap what you sow. And so oftentimes, you know, I, I consider this, Elder Betty, that, you know, I'm going to say this, and, and I want y'all to get mad at me. That when things start to happen in my life, I start to wonder, did I sow this? Okay. That's, that's just real talk right there, Barry. I, I started to wonder, Sam, when before I start going off on folk and, and blessing folk out and texting and erasing and texting and erasing, let me consider this. Did I sow this years ago? Oh, my goodness. And many of us need to be honest. Before you start going off, and, and say, oh, I'm going to fix her. I'm going to get this. You ought to consider, is this the thing that's coming back around to me? And, 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 and it's hard for us. It was hard for me, Pastor Maggie, to trust 
and, and can, I, can I go deeper? It was even harder for me to trust church folk. Because the same one, <laughs> the same one who I thought was there for me and was praying for me and was, and was reaching out to me was the same one that was dogging me out. And so I found it difficult to trust people in my past. And that, that lifestyle, that spirit, Pastor Megan, stuck over and came with me when I got saved. Still had an issue trusting folk. And then I started to realize, well, it's not them. It's me. A lot of the issues that we have in our lives, stop blaming folk. It's you. And for years, we have been playing, we have inherited a spirit called blame. That we don't want to be responsible for the stuff that we're in. This woman you gave me, this man you gave me, although Eve bit the fruit, there was still no sin until Adam bit it. And so, and so once he bit it, and God comes walking through the garden, and, and, and you know, once you become no disobedient, your hearing changes. Oh, your, your senses change. So he's been hearing the same thing for years, but now what he hears, Pastor Maggie, sounds different. And because he has a spirit of disobedience with him, you know what he does? He goes and hides because he's naked. And God says, Adam, where are you? He's been hearing the same thing, but now he's afraid because disobedience causes your hearing to change. And he's been hearing all this for all this time, but now it sounds different because he's been disobedient. God says, where art thou? And he's hiding, covering himself with figs, and he says, I was hiding. Who told you you were naked? This thing this woman you gave me. So for years, we blame other folk. And let me tell you something, saying, you won't get far in life if all you do is blame people for what happens to you. You have to be responsible. You have to be a man. You have to be responsible. If you mess up, you can't blame her. You got to blame you. Okay, let me, let me shift this out. Sister, you can't blame him. You got to look at yourself. It's what you allow to happen. And, and in life, this is how the devil comes in and breaks the trust. To where we won't trust God. It's amazing how we trust God until we get to where we need to be. Until we find what they call a soulmate. Now we don't trust God anymore. <laughs> and, and, and we have to be real about this. Because the other reason why I couldn't trust anybody, Pastor Gretchen, because my expectations were unrealistic. Unrealistic expectations have caused you not to trust want something from somebody that they can't give to you. And it causes you to not trust. I don't care how much if Donna, if I need $10 from Donna, and I don't care how much I want her to give it to me, she can't give it to me. If she doesn't have it. Ooh, this is good. And, and so, so what happens is we put trust in people that can't give us what we need. Ooh. And, 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 and you know what that does for us? It scars us. It hurts us. To now, we won't trust anybody. We got to learn to get people to compartmentalize them where they should be. Once a person has showed you who they are, you put them in the right category. Oh, Lord. I don't want to hear that. Once they showed you that they are a liar, you put them in that liar category. Ooh. 
Once they show you that they are a cheater, you put them in the cheater category. You're not judging them, but you are protecting your own self. So that you know, I know I can't get this from him. I know I can't get this from her. So God placed people in my life whose word going to be their bond. And let me add, there was a time for many of us, our word wasn't our bond. We just wanted to say things and do things because we thought it was cute. Let me say something to you. Pastor, you want us, you're saying to us that you want us to trust God. But where God put us in difficult situations, where God put us in a situation where there was fear but there was no hope, where God put us in a situation where it's just not a beautiful story. You were born into a situation where you needed him to hold on. You, you were born in a situation. You, None of you were born saved. So wait a minute. I guess some of them were born saved. None of us were born saved. We all needed something else. We, we needed some, something else. And, and, and when God created you, he created you with a permanent void that only was designed for him. Man, you can put money in there. It's not going to work. You can put the wealth in there. You can put the job in there. You can put the significant other in there. You can put the house in there. You can put the cars in there. You can put everything else in there, and I promise you it's not going to bring you the fulfillment that only God can. And when you are trying to replace what God has left intentional for him, you create a culture in your life where you can't trust people. Now, Pastor, I want you to prove that to me. In the book of Jeremiah, I want to share with you something that Jeremiah says. It's very, very important. He writes a letter. Now, we know Jeremiah to be the prophet. And he was a prophet. But, but God not only speaks through voices, he also speaks through writing. All right? So Jeremiah writes a letter. He writes a message to some Jews who had been deported from their country. And it's very interesting because he writes this letter and sends it by the hand of, the, of a man named Elisha. And this man takes this letter, and here's, I want you to hear this word, what, he, what Jeremiah writes to them from the voice of God. Listen to this. He writes this letter, verse number one. These are the words of the letter. Jeremiah 29. That Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem, watch this, to the residue of the elders which were carried away captives and the priests and the prophets to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. You know who he's talking to? He's talking to all leaders. All of the leaders have been carried away. After that, Jeconia the king and the queen and the eunuchs, the princes and the carpenters and the smiths, all of them, these were very prominent and important people that were deported from their country. He sends a letter by the hand of Elisha the son of Shaphan and Gamaliel the son of Hilakah. And he says this, verse number four, Thus said the Lord of hosts. First of all, I want you to remember, God not only speaks through voices, he also speaks through what's written. He is a prophet, but he is writing what God has said. So every time 
hear me, the devil comes to you, the best way to respond by saying, it is written. When Jesus was in the wilderness and the enemy came to him, tempting him, trying to rob him of his identity, Jesus responded by saying, it is written, man shall not what? Live. Tell your neighbor, you got to know what's written. Sometimes in your life, you will not always remember what your pastor preached to you. You will not always remember what your leader has spoken to you. That's why you have to be wise enough to know what the word of God says. Because if it's written, it still stands. He writes this letter to them. And he says, to the Israelites that are carried away. whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem into Babylon. Watch what he says. Build you houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. He didn't stop there. Watch what he says, Shannon. Take you wives. And beget sons and daughters, and take your and take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that you, who you, may be increased there and not diminished. Wait a minute, wait a minute, preacher. Do you mean to tell me that God allowed His children to be deported and to be carried away? And now God is telling them in a foreign land to find content and build, build houses, dwell in them, plant gardens, eat the fruit, marry, get your sons to marry, get your daughters to marry. You, you, you telling me this? I am saying, hear what the Lord is saying. In the pandemic that we're in. What is it that you think God is saying to us? God, you knew this was coming. And, and, and listen, we can't blame an administration. We can't blame a certain leader. What we know is that the God that we serve, he knew we would be here. And so, and so God is saying to them, who are, have, have been held captive, wherever you are, build it up, multiply, eat the fruit of the garden, what you plant. Watch what he says. Seek the peace of the city. You know what that means? That means that, that you are believers, you are believing Jews, don't go in there showing out. Go in there and show the love of God. Seek the peace of the city. Don't try to go in there and turn things over. You know, and, 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 and I believe this is to be so as such as now. That with, during this pandemic and during this time, we, we, we as the believers, we as the body of Christ have got to put on another face. That we can show the love of God in such a time as this. I believe. That the love of God should be overflowing in our community. Because, because if we are, are singing and, and if we are shouting every Sunday, then, then we know that the pandemic does not affect us. Because we are tapped and plugged into a God that takes care of us. I want you to help me preach it and find you a neighbor and say, neighbor. God takes care of me. Find you another neighbor and say, oh, neighbor, even though I'm in a pandemic, God is still taking care of me. Come on and find you another preacher voice and say, oh, neighbor, I know things have been rough for a while, and I know things have been tough for a while. But I serve a God that takes care of me. 
That's why I can't lose my faith in God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm still going to trust God. Let me move. You want me to build a city? You want me to build a house? You want me to eat from the fruit of the garden in a foreign land? You want me to find peace in a foreign place? See, the problem is this, that the only way some of you going to shout is if you are in a wealthy place. Ooh, I can't get no help. But I want to know, are there any real praises in here? that will shout in spite of an earthquake. I want to know, are there any real movers and shakers in here that will give God praise in spite of what's in their pocket? I want to know, are there any real hollerers in here that will shout to the Lord? According, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it smells like. God got me. I dare you to open up that mouth and give them praise today. Come on, let's open up that mouth and give them glory. Come on, and let's charge up this atmosphere today. And come on and look at your neighbor and say, oh, neighbor, when I look back over my life and all of the hell and all of the drama and all of the misunderstanding, that God has brought me through. When I come to the house of the Lord, I, I can't help but give him praise. I can't help but thank him. Open up your mouth and give him glory. All right. You want me, God, to find peace in a place like this? I had to take a moment and look outside my door. Because after I felt that earthquake, I wanted to make sure I wasn't left. Hold up, wait. I know I've been doing, I, I know I asked for forgiveness. So wait a minute. You want me to trust you in a place like this? God is saying today, can you trust me when you can't even see me? Oh, Lord. When, when it looks like all hell has broke loose, can you trust me? I want you to imagine this. I want you to imagine this. God allows leaders to be deported from their land. He allows it. Okay, let me, let me bring it home to you. So, so let's just say all of you in here, you're in the comfort of your own home. You got your cable, you got your spectrum, you got your Wi-Fi, you got your flat screen TV. Oh, you living wonderful. Everything's nice. Got your new curtains up, new blinds. And all of a sudden, there is a command that you have to make an exit from your home. All right? And all the believers, all the believers, we got to go. So they take us to a foreign land, Pastor Lee. And they take us to this foreign land. And in this land, we don't know nobody. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't understand the land. We don't understand the language, but God brought us here, and he wants us to remain here. If it's for a season, he wants us to remain. The question that most of you are going to ask me is this, God. What did I do wrong? Now, I'm going to say something to you that's very, very deep. Uh, the children of Israel, the Israelites at this time, they are reaping the consequences of people that rebelled before them. And God allowed the consequence to hit them. Sometimes, listen to me, sanctuary, 
That's why, parents, you have to be very careful of the choices that you make because you might not reap the consequence, but your children will. And how fair is it, see here both sides, for you to live your best life and your child have to suffer. And here they are, have been deported. They are deportees. They have been deported from Jerusalem, and God sends a message from the prophet. Make it your best life. First thing I'm going to say is, you want me to trust in a foreign land? In a situation like this, this is where many of us are right now. In a pandemic, everything is crazy. We're in a pandemic and an earthquake. Something, okay, wait a minute. God, what are you saying to me? Here is what God is saying to me. Are y'all ready for this? Thus says the Lord, if you are in a foreign land, I allowed you to be here. I know you're not going to like it. I know you can't stand it as you have been used to the comfort of your own bed. You have been used to the comfort of your own home. You're in a place that you're unfamiliar with. And it's amazing how our trust level must increase in a place of unfamiliarity. And God says something that I want to share with you today that I believe is going to be a blessing to you. Watch what he says. Thus says the Lord. Let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you. Hmm. Neither hearken to your dreams which you cause to be dreamed. Here is what God is saying. While you are in an unfamiliar place, shut the mouths up of those people who supposedly call themselves prophets. Well, what do you mean, preacher? What do you mean? Because then prophets were speaking, watch me, for God. And prophets then, Buffy, were telling the children of Israel, Y'all not going to be here long. Thus said the Lord. It's going to be over after a while. Thus said the Lord. Just hang on in there because you're going to soon come out of this. Little did they know God had already spoken. They would be there for 70 years. So God said, the false prophets that are among you, I want you to shut their mouth. Do not allow them speaking to your spirit. Now, I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I hear the Lord saying this. While we are in this pandemic and while we're in a time where everything seems awkward, everything seems weird, I hear the Lord saying, shut the mouth of those who supposedly be prophets. Don't allow false prophecies to fall into your spirit. Don't allow anybody to just speak into your life. Protect yourself. You don't get nothing I say today. This is why God is saying, hear me, why they don't trust you. Because too many false prophets are speaking words that I didn't say. And if they are going to trust me, they have to be able to hear from me and not false prophets. And I am saying to you today, while we're in this pandemic, and I'm about to close, while we're in this pandemic, while we're in a time such as this, it seems like all hell has broke loose. We are facing this. We are facing that. Every day on the news, you hear this. Every day on CNN, you hear that. All types of news is, is poisoning our spirits. I heard the Lord say, shut the mouth of those who ain't real. Because if they're going, if my people are going to trust me, they need to rely on what I said and not what false prophets are saying. But 
preacher, I don't know. How do we, how do we know if they real or not? How do we know? When you want to talk about trusting God, here's how you know. Because any time a man or a woman of God tell you something you've never heard before, you be careful. Because prophets only confirm. Jeez, y'all ain't getting this. They only confirm what has already been spoken. So if they come out of your life talking about left, you're supposed to. I heard the Lord saying, you know, to, I'm going to send you my cash app. Uh, send me 200. I heard the Lord telling me to tell you that. Have you heard it? Well, praise the Lord. If, if you haven't heard it, hang the phone up nicely and say, have a good day. Because believe it or not, this is why churches are so empty. Because too many false prophecies. Too many false things have occurred being released from unclean vessels. And God is saying that during this time, during this time, if you are going to make it in such a time as this, shut the mouth of those who ain't real. Now, Pastor, why would you say that? In the chapter before this, there was a prophet by the name of Hananiah. Or Han Hananiah was his name. And he was full of false prophets. All he kept doing to the Jews was deceiving them and deceiving them and deceiving them. And how many of you know that if a person keeps lying and fabricating stuff and saying they are from God, you will eventually turn from God. So God says, shut their mouths because they are not speaking from me and they are not speaking for me and they are not speaking of me. You are where you are for a reason. Now, I'm going to close my Bible. Pastor, what does that mean about trusting the young folk? None of us know Because none of us have never been in the pandemic. I know you think I know what I know what I need to do. No, you don't. You really don't know what to do. We got all these preachers speaking and, and coming up with with things to do in the pandemic and how to secure your ministry in the pandemic. How to secure? How do you know? You never been in one. The right thing to say is this. I'm just going to trust God. And if I can't trust God, then I got problems. I got issues. You can't trust because of your past. God, won't for, God has already forgiven you of your past. You got to let it go. You can't trust because of unrealistic expectations. Because you're wanting things from people that can't give it to you. And now you're saying that God, Pastor Christian, will allow me to be at a place where it's all hell. And it seems like everybody around me getting blessed. Everybody around me getting this, getting that. Everybody but me. I want to share something with you today. In my closing. Just because a person is getting blessed financially or blessed with a house, blessed with a car, yes, we give God praise for that blessings, but that doesn't mean that God has forgotten you. It doesn't mean that your time isn't coming. It doesn't mean that, that, that God is not going to open up a door for you. I can recall wanting a job I just knew, Sam, I had this job. I knew I had this job, Buffy, because I knew the people that was hiring. So I just knew, Elder Donald. I just knew. But you know what? I, you know what I did because of what I knew. I walked in there with arrogance versus faith. And 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 you can't have arrogance 
and trust. You got to have one or the other. So because I walked in there, Latika, with arrogance and was like, chewing my gum, stop. I just knew I was the man. I just knew I had it. Come to find out, I was not selected for the job. And as I listened to why I wasn't selected, to nip, to nip it in a nutshell, here's what they said, Elder Jill. He knows more than he wants to. Well, why, what in the world does that mean? That means I was too arrogant. I knew too much. And nobody can be in a partner with anybody that knows everything. Because when you know everything, you know what? The people that knows everything, the people that knows dirt on everybody, the people that knows everybody's history and everybody's story, those are the people you don't trust. Ooh, y'all ain't hearing me. And, and they're telling you because they know everything that you can't trust me. If I know everything about Shannon's past and everything about Pastor Maggie's past and everything about Latika's past, but I never talk about my own. You know what I'm telling you? I'm telling you, you can't trust me. Oh, my God. Because I'm too arrogant. And arrogant people, people who know the dirt on everybody, Know the dirt on every preacher. Y'all ain't hearing me. Now, all of us got friends like this. They know something about every preacher in Greensboro. Girl, I heard this. Girl, hey, I bet you didn't know this. Now, when I tell you this, if it get out, I know who said it. But they never, ever talk about their own discrepancies, their own failures. Those are the ones who we find hard to trust. Let me share this with you. God says to me and to tell you today, even in a time as this, even if you don't trust this kind of devil, you better trust God. Are y'all hearing me? Even if the foundations have been shook this morning and have liberated you from that which was holding you, what good is that if you don't trust God? I don't care how many scriptures you can quote. I don't care how well you can sing. I don't care how good you smell. What good is that if you don't trust God? You would be surprised to know the number of wives that don't trust their husbands. You would be surprised to know the number of husbands that don't trust their wives. You would be surprised to know the number of children that don't trust their parents. You would be surprised to know the number of parents that don't trust their children. Why? Because trust is hard. Trust demands you got to have faith in God. We pray to God, God, I need you to fix this. I don't need you to work this. You trust God. If it's written, it shall No word of the Lord has ever fallen to the ground. Everything God has said, he has brought it to fruition. Why not trust that God is going to do it? In my closing, I'm getting ready to pray. Perhaps you're watching me by YouTube or by Facebook Live. Perhaps you are connected to people that bring out the negativity in you. You want to trust. You want to do right. But you are linked with people that make it so difficult to trust. Perhaps that's you. Perhaps you have people in your family. You love them, but you don't trust them. Perhaps you are in a relationship and you can't trust them. Is it even called a relationship? Because relationship, because trust is the thing that brings the things into fruition, into its abundance. And you 
just the truth. How many of you are willing to say with me today, God, I trust you. I want you to say it if you're watching me by YouTube and the Facebook Live. You, you know, sometimes the problem is you only do this when you are around church folk. Suppose you are by yourself in your car. Suppose you are on your way to the grocery store. I want you to say this with me. God, I trust you. God, I trust you beyond reason. God, I trust I don't have to have a reason to trust you. I just trust you. I've I, I, I made so many mistakes. I tried to do it this way. I tried to do it that way, and it doesn't work. God, I trust you. If you can trust me, if you can trust God today, I want you to rest to your feet. I'm done, Robert. I want you to rest to your feet. I want to pray today. You know why I couldn't trust Bishop and First Lady Dola? You know why?